One of the most amazing things that Amazon did was everything is an API. When you look at this list of services here, every single one of these services, in our case, Lambda, has an API. Every single operation that you perform in the actual AWS console, the website, to manage your AWS infrastructure, clicking and seeing the information about the configuration, listing your Lambda functions, looking at the code, seeing what triggers are there, adding new ones, all of that has an equivalent API method in a language of your choice, JavaScript, Python, Shell, if you're cray cray, even Haskell. The official one for Amazon and Node, you can npm install through AWS SDK. If you're in an enterprise, a lot of proxies and things like that, they have support for that as well. But if you're outside of that, you don't have those problems, you can just install this SDK, set up your access key and secret access key and you're good to go. You can do anything from S3 to Lambda. Tonight, we're gonna use two of those. So if you go to the SDK, you'll see all the Amazon services here. Just do a search at the top left for Lambda, click it, and your entire right side of your screen will be replaced with everything you need for Lambda. So simply instantiate it, and when you scroll down here, all these functions are the exact same thing that's offered inside of the website. So the same things we did in Shell, such as list functions, right, right there. And you write it in JavaScript, and it comes back in JavaScript, which is fantissimo. Verts are existing, Two scripts are update script, right, which actually zips the code and then updates it, and then our invoke script, which invokes the function. We'll create a new file called update.js. Log first. I'm really tired, so bear with me as I attempt to code this evening. Our AWS SDK, if you've already installed it, is AWS-SDK, unlike the CLI. We're gonna need the file system to actually read and write the zip file. So we're going to go ahead and import him. Now, I don't want you to put your credentials for Amazon inside of your source control. So we're going to load it from a JSON file. So I'm not going to show you what this looks like. You can go to my blog and see how it looks. But basically, that's where your key is, that's where your region is, and that's where your secret key is. So don't check this file into source control, add it to git ignore, and you'll be safe. We go ahead and instantiate our Lambda. You can instantiate any service from Amazon this way, we're just gonna do Lambda. And our params for update is the exact same thing for shell, it's just slightly different for the parameter values. So function name, again, is the same thing as my function man. But the zip file is actually, in our case, a buffer. So we're gonna go ahead and read fs read file sync. And we'll get the index.zip in there. Do Lambda update function code. Standard node way of doing things, params as the first parameter for the Amazon call. And then the callback has the whole error slash data paradigm of if there's an error, we'll send it to you as a first parameter, otherwise nothing. So if there is an error, we'll log it out and abort the function. Abort, we've got an error. Otherwise, we're good to go funky comedina. Let's log out the data. So if you do node update or node update JS, whatever is your way of doing things, you can run it. It'll upload the zip file, update the function code, and return the exact same thing, except now that it's a JSON and in JavaScript, it's a lot easier to actually read this stuff and play with it, which is kind of cool. But now we can replace our package JSON with updates to JS. Now, what we're not doing is we're gonna do node update JS, but we're not doing the zip. So we still should have a package functionality. So we'll say package zip. And we'll still run our update at sh, but we'll call it package to zip. And that way it'll create the zip file for us. So we'll still use the whole sh. This functionality right here is wonderbar. The stuff below, we don't need that anymore. So that's how you update your function using JavaScript. Let's do the same thing for invoke. So we'll say invoke.js. And we'll copy pasta coding. Except these parameters are slightly different. The function name is the same. We have this thing called payload. And that's the JSON that you send. We want to stringify it. So we'll do normal JSON like we would in normal JavaScript and just throw it inside a JSON stringify. And we don't need all the other parameters that Shell needs. He's a lot more picky. Instead of update function code, it's lambda invoke. So same callback way of calling things, error and data. Data is gonna be one of two things, and I'll explain that in a minute. By default, this calls it as an invoke. So think as you're invoking a function normally, just like you would in JavaScript as a callback. That's almost the exact same thing this does with your lambda. If you do an event, Right now it defaults to an event type of request response. But if you do an event, it'll simply say, yes, I started that Lambda function. 
I have no idea if it finished or what response it gave. And sometimes there are uses for that. We'll talk about that in a future video. For now, exact same thing, log the error if it occurred, and then abort the function. Otherwise, log what kind of data we got back from the function. Check for red, we are good to go. Now you can run node invoke, just like you did with update, and it'll remotely invoke the Lambda function and give you the result back as JSON. So this is the JSON response that you sent back with the stringified payload. So we could decode that if we wanted to, to do some better checks against it. We'll go on our package JSON, replace this with node invoke JS. And once we change this to a package in a zip file, we're good. We can now edit code, repackage our zip. We could actually call this to make it easy and evil. We can just do a pre-update and it'll zip our code and then update it. So that way all you have to do is npm run update and it'll automatically zip your code. That ladies and gentlemen is how you use JavaScript to actually upload your Lambda function when you change it, simply call npm run update. And if you wanna invoke it and see what it gets back without having to call the API gateway or if you have another trigger such as an S3 or an SNS, you don't have to run any of that. You can simply just invoke the function directly and see if it works. And as you create more and more microservices, this gets really useful because you can start chaining these in the promise change, callback chains, whatever else.